नमस्ते आदाब सी अकाल दिस इज अंकल वेलकम इच वन ऑफ यू इन दिस अमेजिंग सेशन ऑन मॉडर्न बिजनेस एनवायरनमेंट द चैप्टर दैट वी आर नाउ गोइंग टू स्टार्ट वाओ वेरी नाइस चैप्टर एंड व्हाट अ ग्रेट पर्सन टू स्टार्ट विद समबडी हु हैज एक्चुअली चेंज द कोर्स ऑफ मॉडर्न एनवायरनमेंट श्री 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 मिस्टर ई लॉन मस्क ओ बॉय राइट टेस्ला स्पेस एक्स पेपॉल फाउंडर all of these companies right the owner of them and indeed he has changed the landscape of the whole world planning to go to mars very soon soon uh, he he feels that mars is a place where people can live forever anyways we'll see what time shows us but for now we are going to start with this chapter and the name of the chapter is modern business environment and indeed the modern environment of business is ever changing who knew 20 years back probably that the likes of social media will capture the whole industry in a way which you know unbelievable to think of who knows in the next 10 years how artificial intelligence will transform the whole world so obviously uh, just you know how things are changing is what is going to be discussed in this chapter now i am going to discuss everything in detail so what is going to be my target for today i'll tell you that first up so let me tell you that this chapter basically has three major concepts so to say three major concepts so to say so i'll just write down the chapter modern business environment okay and this chapter is divided indeed into three parts what are those three parts one is called as quality the other is called as tqm and then we have something called as scm scm supply chain management now when i say of uh, when i speak of quality your what they mean to say is the cost of quality right we all know how big how high an emphasis is in today's businesses the impact of quality is so cost of quality then what is scm it is called as supply chain management and the last is total quality management am i right everybody okay okay now what is going to be a part of today's session pay attention so today's session is going to be focused on this see so basically this chapter is divided into three parts quality tqm and scm quality meaning cost of quality tqm total quality management and scm supply chain management of which today's focus of which today's focus our lectures focus will be on the three aspects one theory of as uh, cost of quality the other the practical aspect of cost of quality and then the mcq related questions of cost of quality so that is how the whole system will be worked up for us and that's how uh, we will approach this subject now if you all remember my last session just the introduction session i told you all that i have a particular way of teaching any subject and my way revolves around examples 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 so that's what i usually start with then from those examples <clears throat> i connect to the concepts from the concepts i will take you to the practical questions so today we are going to solve two practical questions as well yeah so today we are going to solve two questions uh, approximately 25 mcqs in today's session and theory relating to cost of quality now where does this whole concept of cost of quality originate from let me tell you whenever you hear this word quality it is synonymous to one of the world's most developed countries and that is japan yes 
that is where the majority of the quality concepts were introduced were uh, bought in and yeah here we are quality and japan are almost equivalently used yes i'll give you a example just listen to my example and you'll realize that why and how japan has conquered the whole quality system throughout the whole world do you remember japan's bombing of world war 2 who bombed japan hiroshima and nagasaki was bombed right by whom by america united states of america if you remember bombed them after the world war 2 almost uh, on the completion of world war 2 they were bombed by hiroshima and nagasaki they were bombed by america who bombed hiroshima and nagasaki and japan was reduced to shambles there was hardly anything left in japan and that is when they stood up and stood up very very nicely so 1944 or so japan was bombed now i had a perception that it is the united states of america who did wrong to japan by bombing them and that to a nuclear bomb that was very very brutal and unexpected but then i got into the history and realized it was japanese who instigated the americans in world war 1 japanese had bombed pearl harbor which is in america and that's where the revenge was taken by america in the 1944 world war 2 yes so that's when they thought that okay how dare the japanese people bomb us immediately they did not react because they did not have the resources but they waited for the day when they will have all the resources and world war 2 end was the time they thought of doing it but after few years japan was back to its normal and it it ensured that none of it ensured that none of uh, the bombings could destroy their economy yes it was destroyed for a few months or so but they came back and they came back very strong and do you know which country is responsible for the revival of america a uh, revival of japan you will be shocked to know it is america yes after this bombing of hiroshima nagasaki america said see you bombed us once we bombed you again hisab 00 balance settle down now let's be friends now let's help each other so a lot of american economists and a lot of american quality specialists went to japan to ensure that they are able to teach them quality because when these americans reached japan they saw that japanese products were hopeless they were shoddy you know not good quality they were of shoddy quality so that's where japanese people thought that we want to become the manufacturing hub we want to give the best products to the whole world so the american economist and quality specialist said that my god your products are very bad how is it possible that you will be able to give quality products and that's where they said that for this japan it will take 10 years and 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 it will take 10 years and a lot of hard work for you to give the best quality products japanese people said we are ready for hard work we are ready to give 10 years and we are ready for hard work you will not believe they worked so hard that in a span of 5 years they became the best provider of manufactured quality materials throughout the whole world so much so that in the year 1960 they were able to come out with their own bullet train world's fastest bullet train at that point in time even after 60 years plus we even at india level we are not able to do that but they did it and how so that's that's what japan and japanese people are they are just too hard working and ensuring that their country grows above anything else and during that phase they learned a lot of things they ensured that this focus is always on quality giving the best to the manufacturers and that is where once they started giving the quality products they became the manufacturing hubs they became the manufacturing hubs 
विद द हेल्प ऑफ थ्री कॉन्सेप्ट दैट वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी टूडे वन दे इन कॉर्पोरेटेड द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ क्वालिटी कॉस्ट in their manufacturing process in their manufacturing process then they also ensured that total quality management is incorporated in the product development and the customer should get the end product with full clarity called as supply chain management so one thing led to the other so obviously focus was giving quality products in manufacturing giving rise to total quality management products giving rise to ensuring that customers are also happy so this chapter is going to teach us from manufacturing to customer support everything from manufacturing to customer support everything and 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 that's what japanese people are famous for that's what japanese people are famous for for giving the best quality in manufacturing through use of three concepts which we are going to study in today's chapter quality cost total quality management supply chain management are we clear with the first basic with the idea of what we are going to study today guys yes sir what's up now cost of quality is uh, what we will first understand but before i make you understand the concept i will start with an example which you will never forget in your life and hence you will never forget the concept as well my my example starts with my dream a dream that i used to think when i was doing my article ship so during my article ship days you know so just when i was almost of your age in ca final uh planning to appear in some time and obviously everybody has dreams you should have so i had this dream that before i turn 30 i wanted three things i wanted three things one is uh to have an iphone for some reasons i i am a die hard fan of steve jobs and so i wanted an iphone so i i knew that it is only going to be possible if i clear my chartered accountancy examination no other option do i have so i thought once i dream and become a chartered accountant i will purchase a iphone second i am a big travel buff so i want to travel 30 countries under 30 age so 30 under 30 is what i call it and the third is so i i took an iphone as soon as my uh ca got completed got placed in jp morgan first salary i bought a lot of gifts for my family and friends and then second salary immediately from the second salary i purchased an iphone uh, iphone 4 that too i purchased from usa so since i was working in jp morgan I, we had a lot of connects from there so i ordered it from there got it here because i was so crazy for it then travel 30 under 30 means i Travel thirty countries under thirty, and I had this dream. Till age of twenty-five, I had not even travelled one single country. But then later on, for the five years, I thought, "Chalo, now is the time. Let's travel." So completed this also, and then I also had one more dream, and that was to own a car. And that's what my example for today is related to. You should also have dreams. Then from twenty-one to thirty, uh, from thirty-one to forty, I have a dream. Currently, I am in that phase, thirty-one to forty. so in that phase then 41 to 50 i have some um, more dreams so that's how it should be 10 year planning so car i purchased i20 hyundai was my first car and that's what i purchased again from my initial salary so after 6 months i had a good decent surplus amount in my bank account used that to give the down payment and then purchased my own car yes i was very very happy with it i had a very very uh, big passion for car and, and and purchased it now new car purchased the main use of car was traveling from office to home uh, and home to office nothing more my, so my home was my home and office distance was approximately 15 kilometers and from office again back i would get back to home 
and then again weekends would be with the friends and family weekends would be with friends and family so that's how my whole system worked out new car i was taking it very nicely taking care of the new car ensuring that everything is in place now just you know traveling from home office weekends enjoying with family and friends and everything things were going good until until after year 1 i got a call from the hyundai team maintenance team and they told me that sir year 1 is over now we need to maintain your car please send your car to us i said okay fair enough i'll send but are there any charges they were like yes sir uh, so when i purchased the car they had given me an option 3 year a uh, warranty and they were charging a few thousand rupees or something but i didn't take i said no if anything is there i'll see later on so i had not taken any 3 year warranty or uh, maintenance or something so i knew that i'll have to do the maintenance externally and i was ready for it hmm. so now i got a call from hyundai service center and they said that sir send your car for maintenance i said no i'll send it to you but you first tell me what are the charges they told that sir 15000 will be rupees will be your charges for maintenance so please send your car and 15000 after the maintenance is done you can give now i am a marwadi person at heart now you know how marwadi people are for them everything is about apna sapna mani mani everything is about money so same even i started thinking now my car was running very very smoothly i had no issues with my car whatsoever ha huh? so car was going all well still these buggers called me and told me no no sir still you should maintain i called what few of my friends and family two of my uh, family people i called and i told them should i do the maintenance it is going in the right you know it's going all good there are no issues at all it's going very smooth he said still you should get the maintenance done it's a compulsion you can feel that way like but everything is going good still yes they said still you have to do it I'm like okay chalo let's see i'll think then i called to a few, a few of my friends they also said that yes uncle you have to do the maintenance part there's no doubt about that but 15000 rupees so i thought i thought that whether i should do or not and finally i thought chalo i'll take a call i'll not do it my marwadi brain overpowered logic and said that no let's not do this because things are going good no why unnecessarily spend ha huh? to so i just skipped it again second year i you know used the car very nicely again for these purposes after year 2 i again got a call from the hyundai maintenance team from their service department again they told that sir now at least do the maintenance now i said no sorry i don't want to maintain how much are the charges they said sir 25000 this time i said why right, so much last time you said 15000 sir obviously now two years so more oil will be required brake filter and bonnet uh, checking and engine oil and all of that they started saying that technical things again i thought you are see this year i am not doing next year i will pakka do third year i will pakka do because so far car is doing good things are going well i should i honestly spend so i thought chalo we'll we'll see what is to be done then came your 3 again in your 3 i had to do the maintenance again i had to do the maintenance and 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 now i got a call and they said that sir this time it will be 35000 ha huh? i'm like okay but uh, sir last time you said that definitely this year you will do sir now what what is happening sir but if the car is doing good why should i do the maintenance again my marwadi brain overpowered logic and i said no no i will not maintain next year pakka sure your swear your swear i'll do it i'll do it for sure you would be thinking no sir is such a big stingy person shut come on yaar i'm earning with so much effort so every penny counts for me yaar hmm so now this is how things work after 3 years and 3 months after 3 years and 3 months there was some sound coming from my engine i realized something is a problem then 
After few months more some there was some more issues and everything. And finally year 4 was near. I knew that the maintenance call will come and it did come. And this time I wanted to give purposely because there was some sound coming. There were some wiring issues. At times the car had stuck in between. So there were issues and I was like chalo. This time I will give I, to ask them how much they said sir 50,000 this time. I'm like oh so much. Yes sir. I, do you want to get it done? I'm like, yes, please. I'll send the 50,000 rupees. Complete the maintenance and get back. You're like, hey, yes, sir. We'll also check the car in case anything else. We'll let you know. I'm like, okay, no problem. Now I got a call from them after some time that, sir, the maintenance charges is not going to be 50,000. Sir, it is going to be 1,50,000. Ayyo. OMG. Are you kidding me? 1,50,000 for what? Sir, this year the maintenance charges are there. Other than that, there are a lot of internal issues within your car. Are, so what? Do it well, no? Sir, can't do it without this cost, no? But why didn't you tell me this before? Sir, you didn't come for maintenance. Oh, and that word stuck me. Stuck my head that OMG, what did I do, yaar? Why didn't I come earlier? If I... I asked him if I had come earlier, he told that if you had come earlier, we would have rectified this mistake earlier only before it became so grave and so big. Then I told them, but I thought that what to do maintenance, sir, it's not like that. No, it's a car, it's a machine and it has its own wear and tear. Oh, if I would have earlier given at least 15, 15, 15, 16, I would have paid 16 to 60 to 75,000. Now, unnecessarily, because of my mistake, I have to give more money so that my car come back to the same quality. Basically, what I mean to say is quality. Now I am going to get, but with a cost. As they say, quality comes, but with a cost. And who better than me would know this? Who better than me would know this? Boy. I was very, very upset with myself. But that's how it was. That's when I realized that boss, quality is the most important thing. You should not compromise on. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. I compromised on the quality maintenance. And eventually my repair cost was so high that it would have been better if I would have spent on quality costs. And this is what. Hello. This is what quality does to you and that's the explanation that was given by the Japanese people by the US uh, economist who went to Japan for work. So finally I realized my thing now this example just remember because now we are going to use this example to connect to our first concept and that is cost of quality. Before that, I will give you some more examples, some two, three more examples. See, my whole teaching methodology is based on example because I know as examples, you will be able to remember everything and then it will become easy for you to apply. Second example is related to Samsung Note 7. Second example is relating to Samsung Note 7. This phone had such a bad battery that its battery exploded. Yes, and it was a very, very big blot on the name of Samsung. There were so many recalls. The goodwill of Samsung was up for a toss. They had reputational issues. Then everything. They had to replace the whole uh, you know, mobile phone. It was a disaster. Nothing less than a disaster for them. But that's how it is. It is. What it is. It is. So, again, Samsung also realized that quality comes with a, a horrible cost. A cost of recall, goodwill, reputation, replacement. Not a good sign for any company. There was another company which did the same mistake. That company, very famous car automobile company, Volkswagen, thus auto. Yes. Even Volkswagen say made some cars and say uh, so Volkswagen when it has to sell cars in USA in USA they have a, they have a certain norm 
there is a pollution control equipment which they should put and that pollution control equipment is a compulsion by the US authorities. But it obviously comes with a cost. So they did not put the pollution control equipment in the car. And eventually, and eventually, eventually, the control, the authorities of USA came to know about it and they rejected the Volkswagen cars. They rejected the Volkswagen cars. They said that you have to recall all the cars. You will have to first replace the pollution control equipment and then resend it to it. The customers, again, again, loss of money because now you have to put this pollution control equipment, loss of reputation that, oh my God, the uh, Volkswagen cars have to be recalled. Not a good sign for any business, not a good sign for any company. And yes, they also paid a big cost for the quality, giving us, making us to our first concept and that concept by now you would have remembered is called as cost of quality. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody with me. Yes, cost of quality. So if you are making any product, focus on quality first. Your quality should be the best so that there is no defective at all in your product. Mr. Sankar did not focus on quality and eventually he had to pay a big price for the defects. So was the case with Samsung Note 7. So was the case with Volkswagen. And there are so many examples that I can quote you. But now we realize that yes, quality comes with a cost, but let's focus. Let's be ready to pay the cost so that we get the best quality and zero defect so that we get the best quality and zero defect. Are you understanding everybody? So, so, so in a nutshell, what is quality cost? If you focus on quality, there will be less defectives. If you focused on, if, if Mr. Sankal focused on maintenance, he would have paid less amount in repair. If Samsung focused on battery testing, battery quality, battery overall uh, you know, working, they would have not paid a amount for recalls, goodwill, replacement. So is the case with folks Wagon. And that's what guys, cost of quality is all about. That's what cost of quality is all about. It is divided into two parts one focus on making good quality products so obviously there will be a cost of good quality as a result your cost of bad quality will go down as a result your cost of bad quality will go down if we focus on good quality, cost of bad quality will go down. If you do not focus on good quality, your bad quality will go up. I am now going to make a big sarcasm on each one of you. If you do not study good for your examination, it is like that. Study good and you will not have to see failure. But if you don't study, <laughs> you know what I am trying to say, right, 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 okay. So this is about your cost of quality. So what it is, so we will say cost of quality is two things. Before production or pre-production or you can say during production, you have to focus on its quality called as cost of good quality called as cost of conformance. It is also called as cost of conformance. Conforming to quality products is called as cost of conformance. If this is good, then it will result in good post production or lower post production defects, which is your cost of bad quality. Right? 
and this basically is technically is called as cost of non conformance done got it so that's how it works now uh, mr jurang the person who came from america to japan to develop he said that this cost of quality is divided into four parts this cost of quality is divided into four parts which now we are going to study in the course of our whole topic so i hope we are clear with what exactly is your cost of quality now we will get more into the details as we move on and this is the four division that he did and all of that now let's open our textbook let's open our textbook and start with the whole chapter the first concept obviously being cost of quality but before we move on to cost of quality there is a backdrop related to it let's understand that backdrop and 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 let's get started so please open your textbooks your theory book so that we can start on a positive note chal let's start hmm so modern business environment we started with an example and i am going to connect to that example very very soon stay tuned oh wow. so here we are during the past two decades the business environment in many sectors has been characterized by rapid changes now it is very important for us to read every theoretical line because everything can be asked in anything can be asked in mcq so yes so very true the first paragraph is mainly an introduction just telling us that you know uh, the business environment is undergoing a lot of changes and there are a lot of plans and policies that a company will have to take to ensure that things are in place and everything is going rightly so let's take it forward the environment is ever changing and dynamic in nature again can be asked for yes mcq the modern business environment drastically changed shape entirely in a different manner it has now become a challenge for business managers to understand their business environment and formulate business plans and policies accordingly business technology has advanced business functions and operations to new levels and hence the role of accounting is very very important so th this is just an introduction this is trying to say that yes business environment is very important characterized by rapid changes and how managers will adopt to it how will they make their plans policies accordingly now the most important thing that has happened with business environment that it has converted itself from traditional to new environment what was there in traditional environment it was a cost plus approach as in if i am a businessman i will calculate the cost of my product say uh, if i am making a calculator i will calculate the cost of the product add the margin to it profit margin to it i will get the price of this product but now things are changing now things now the pricing is competitive so there is a case of competitive pricing so the price is decided based on the market scenario what it then then is response time determined by suppliers but now it is based on jit see now what used to happen is i'll tell you the system used to be sellers market previously the in the traditional system the market used to be sellers market but now it has become buyers market that's right now it has become buyers market so from sellers market to buyers market how things have changed so this is what this whole uh, distinguish is all about cost plus approach competitive pricing in terms of pricing see even it was sellers market there were hardly two to three sellers and there were so many buyers but now now there are many sellers so buyers have a negotiation value right so previously when there were less sellers 
the sellers used to determine the price. Now there are many sellers. So pricing is based on competitive pricing. Pricing is based on competitive pricing. Response time. It was determined by suppliers. But now it is just in time. Previously I used to say, oh, it will take 10 days, 15 days. Ask your parents just to get a phone call connection. Phone connection at your home telephone. They used to wait for 8 months, 9 months, 12 months. Now you get a call from them. Sir, please take phone connection from my company. How things have changed. Response time. It was determined by suppliers. Now it is just in time. You order and you will get whatever you want on immediate basis. Called as just in time. Quality determined by service uh, or product provider. Better than customers expectations. Previously it was whatever quality you whatever product you used to get. You will take it keep it with you. But now you will expect and in fact you will get greater better than your expectations and performance it was dictated to the customer now it is efficient and effective if it is effective and efficient all right guys so that's how the whole system is based divided into traditional environment and new environment traditional environment cost plus approach determined by suppliers quality based determined by service or product uh, product provider now better than expectations of everybody previously performance was dictated to the customer now everything is efficient and effective also as a result of this the characteristics of modern business environment are a lot first because of sellers to buyers market now the number of sellers have increased why because of globalization of world economy. See, in 1991, India was a restricted economy. After 1991, we started LPG, liberalization, privatization, globalization. What is globalization? Asking the outside than India countries, companies to come to India and develop the product. So now you are competing not only with your product, but also not only with your local products, but also with an international product. See your fierce competition among organizations within and across countries. Now, this is how the modern business environment is characterized by. You have to use new managerial methods to be relevant. Survival of the fittest as said by Charles Darwin is now the concept used by every business. Global excess capacities in production. This is the case of China. China for the last 20 years has built huge manufacturing capacities. Huge. So, as a result, they have a lot of excess capacities. I know a lot of my friends, uh, my uh, colleagues who, you know, when I was working with JP Morgan. Just a moment. Yes, so <clears throat> global excess capacities in production services and in some areas of development. So China last 20 years has produced a huge amount of capacities. Uh, as I told you, my friends, colleagues would go to China, whatever costs rupees 20 year, the Chinese manufacture it at rupees 2. And they have so much of bulk manufacturing that whatever excess capacity is there, they can send it to the whole world at a very, very cheap cost. And that's what China has been doing for so many years. So global excel, uh, excess capacities, availability and accessibility of data and knowledge has become so easy on account of internet. So the customers know what is being sold at what price. You just go onto Amazon or a Flipkart and you have the price of almost everything and anything that you want, right? Timely availability of materials and services. So now things are available on time. One day delivery from five day delivery to one day delivery to uh, you know half a day delivery to 10 minute delivery. That's what we are. Ease of global travel and transportation. You can travel to any part of the world. Get the product that you want. Get the service that you want. So that is how. The modern business environment is characterized by and a lot of it has changed in terms of macroeconomic, technological, political and social changes. 
And now, as per today's businesses, there is just one challenge and that is to satisfy the customers through exceptional performance of your processes. So your process has to be so good that the customer has to be satisfied, should get the value for the money that he is paying. And for that, three concepts are going to be very important. Just look down there. First, cost of quality. Second, total quality management. Third, supply chain management. Cost of quality, total quality management, supply chain management. Are you understanding? Are you clear? Done. So, now finally, we are moving on to our first concept. The base that I had set for you all through my uh, example is now what we are coming to. But so, this was just an introduction wherein we came to know the rapid changes, the changing dynamic nature resulting in the companies formulating better business plans and policies. Technology became advanced and uh, yeah, that's how it worked. How the traditional environment changed to new environment from cost plus approach to competitive pricing from focus on suppliers to just in time quality now has to be given above customers expectations and uh, you know the, the performance is also becoming effective and efficient how is the characterized of characterization of modern business environment globalization competitiveness many new methods global access capacities accessibility of data knowledge thanks to internet timely availability of material and ease of travel and transportation now we want the customers to be happy and for that we need to ensure that we focus on cost of quality now the first question that will come to your mind is what is quality i'll tell you first giving the customer what it wants conformance to specification of customer is what is quality simple you need a 100 hour batch from me i have to ensure that i give it to you somewhere around those number of hours conformance to customer specifications you need a totally fresh batch done if if that is there satisfy customer expectation amount you are paying a value for money if you are able to clear it in the first go you will feel that yes the worth the value for money is realized are you understanding so that's how the characterization of quality is conformance to customer specification satisfy customer expectation and give them value vfm value for money this is what quality is and in order to give this quality in order to give this quality we need four things we need four things we need to incur a good prevention and appraisal cost to ensure that my internal failure and external failure is reduced to minimum is reduced to minimum so there is components of cost of quality which has two components one cost of conformance relating to good quality and non conformance relating to poor quality which i had told y'all taught y'all in my examples if sankalp had focused on this good quality cost of conformance relating to prevention and appraisal or even samsung note 7 or even volkswagen cost of conformance would have been lower so what are prevention costs what are appraisal costs so for you i have derived a simple meaning to make you understand. You will not find it anywhere. So just focus here. And you will get the answer. So first is prevention cost. What is a prevention cost? A cost incurred on designing the product. Before the product goes into the production. So before cost incurred before the production. Costs incurred before the production is prevention cost simple second what are appraisal costs what are appraisal costs so during the production the costs that you have to incur whether the machine is of proper quality 
whether the raw material is being processed properly get few samples of the production whether the samples are of desired quality is appraisal cost so cost incurred during the production during the production third is internal failure cost now after the production after the after the production is done after the production is done if you find any defective quality product then you will have to rework it you have to redesign it right that is called as internal failure but ensure that the product is not out of your factory and gone to the customer because that will become external failure cost so after the production if you test oh there is some quality issue you will have to do a remake of that product called as a internal failure so after production after production but before the product leaves the factory for the product leaves the factory and finally we will have the external failure finally we will have the external failure which is customer level defect goods are out of the factory gone to the customer customer says oh this is not good return it back the warranties and the guarantees and all of that is external failure customer level defect customer level defect are we clear everybody prevention appraisal internal failure external failure if focus is properly on prevention and appraisal automatically internal failure external failure will go down let's come back to our book let's come back to the theory so cost of conformance and cost of non conformance what is cost of conformance cost of good quality prevention appraisal cost incurred to avoid poor quality of products to minimize number of defects as i told you planned and incurred before actual operation hello before actual operation associated with design implementation and maintenance of quality management system could be quality planning quality engineering quality design quality review quality training quality audit quality supplier evaluation everything related to quality 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 is your internal is your prevention cost cost of good quality cost of conformance acha acha then we have the appraisal costs then we have the appraisal costs what are your appraisal costs so here we are no ensuring that high quality standards and performance requirements are adhered to are adhered to so associated with suppliers and customers evaluation of purchase material processes products so see here when the raw material has come first when the raw material has come check raw material is proper or not so purchase material is proper then put it in the machine is the machine proper equipment is proper or not they are ha huh, products and the equipment evaluation of purchase material processes basically your machine is proper or not then make some samples are the sample up to the specifications or not all of these things have to be checked in the appraisal cost field testing package testing equipment testing product or process acceptance in terms of samples right then comes internal failure if there is any issue at this level if there is any issue at this level which means that there is a defective product that has been manufactured so after the production hello after the production if still there is a defect we will say it is a 
IFC internal failure cost. We will say it is a IFC internal failure cost. So incurred to remedy. So now there is a issue. There is a problem with the material, with the product that has been made. Now how do I rectify the mistake? Right. So see how how it is work is this that if there is any defect, if there is any defect in the product, you will have to take it um, uh, before it goes out of the factory. So after production, before it leaves out of the factory, if there is any product issue, it has to be resolved. And that's what internal failure cost is all about. Incurred to remedy defect discovered before the product or service is delivered to the customer. Cost incurred to correct deficiencies caused by error in products and inefficiencies in processes. All right, guys. So, FC occurs when product not as per quality design standards. And that's the reason, you know, it would be broken or something of that sort. Say, for example, if you can see this calculator, if there is one button which is not properly put up, then you will have to do the rework. If more than 5 to 10 buttons are not proper, then there, it will be a scrap. There could be some chipping on the calculator. You would have to redesign or probably a retest. So all of this is a part of your internal failure. And if the uh, the product has gone out of the factory and if it meets, if, if the customer gets that bad product, then in that case, sorry, but this is called as a external failure cost incurred after leaving the factory detected by the customer incurred to correct defects discovered by the customers occurs when product or service fail to reach the design quality standards not detected not detected until transfer to customer causing dissatisfaction and warranties complaints you will have to give customer support there will be lost market share suppose if a, you do not give a good quality product then the customers will not refer it to some other customer and as a result you will lose the market share so that is a big a big problem returns you will have to incur on return and allowances there will be a liability on you so all of that is a part of your external failure cost so in a nutshell just read this line and you will understand a lot of things. Higher the prevention and appraisal cost, lower will be the defects and internal and external failure. I hope we are absolutely clear as far as cost of quality is concerned. As far as cost of quality is concerned. Got it guys? So cost of quality comprising of two things. Cost of control, cost of failure of control. Also called as conformance, non-conformance cost. Also called as good quality, poor quality costs. Right, 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 right. The best approach will be to, always remember, cost of quality is calculated as a percentage of total cost, which allows comparison of cost of quality across projects or companies. I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. See. Hmm. Now, when I'm making a product, let's... Take an example. Okay. Now, if I am making, say, a product A, product X, I will incur prevention cost, appraisal cost on them. Say, I incur 2 lakh rupees of prevention cost, uh, 3 lakh rupees of appraisal cost. So, can I say in all 5 lakh rupees I have incurred, right? In turn, it will result into internal failure and external failure to the tune of 6 lakh to the tune of 7 lakh rupees giving a total of 13 lakh a failure of 13 lakh right ah, right now in terms of percentage see how much total cost total quality cost is prevention plus appraisal plus internal failure plus external failure total quality cost is 18 lakh rupees yes and that 18 lakh rupees now we have to find as a percentage that's the whole point so say 5 divided by 18 and 13 divided by 18 so we come to know that we are focusing how much on cost of good quality 5 divided by 18 oh only 28 percent and here it is 72 percent 
so now what we will do we will try to reduce the internal external failure by increasing the prevention and appraisal cost so let's try and do that let's try and do that so suppose now i focus more on prevention and appraisal right so say prevention cost is 4 lakh appraisal cost is 5 lakh total works out to 9 lakh right this will result in internal failure and external failure this will result in internal failure and external failure so 1 lakh and 1.5 lakhs and 1.5 lakhs all right guys so overall now we know that how much is this this is uh, 2.5 lakhs yeah. 2.5 lakhs so now we know that see overall cost has reduced overall overall cost has cost has reduced to 11.5 lakhs to 11.5 lakhs now if i see 9 divided by 11.5 it is approximately 78 percent and here it is approximately 22 percent of total cost now the difference when your quality up uh, when your prevention appraisal cost was low your internal external failure cost was very high you realize that you improved on that and now see once you increased it to 78 percent look at the internal external failure gone down to a very very considerable extent right so this is what we say that as a percentage of total cost so here we see that the, the costs as a percentage so prevention cost as a percentage of total cost internal external failure as a percentage of total cost are you understanding guys yes done now the next concept is called as optimal cost of quality so now see here we kept on increasing the inter prevention and appraisal cost our internal external failure kept on getting down but there will be a point right where we will be like okay enough of prevention appraisal now even if there is an internal external failure it's okay that level is called as optimal cost of quality see we will want to be zero defect company but may not always be possible so logically when prevention and appraisal costs are high your internal and external failure will be low your internal and external failure will be low but 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 if your prevention and appraisal costs are low your internal and external costs are high your internal and external costs are high this level boss this level is called as optimal cost of quality optimal cost of quality all right yes so hope all of us are clear with this i'll just read it from this also an increased expenditure in prevention and appraisal is likely to result in a substantial reduction in failure costs because of the trade-off there may be an optimum operating level which combined costs are at minimum the combined costs are at minimum Achha, everybody so yes this is your optimal cost of quality optimal cost of quality right so we got to know about the percentage of cost of quality now we are also aware of optimal cost of quality just to give you an idea that sir after doing this book are we supposed to do the module well my answer will always be no because as you see everything will be of whatever is given in the module is covered here in fact i have be giving more things only so at the end of the session i can i'll just show you that how we have covered everything that is there in the module now we move on to the next concept called as the views regarding the cost of quality so what are the views first view is higher the quality means higher cost which is true to a certain extent because if i have to give quality i will need more quality checks in order to have more quality checks i will have need more laborers so accordingly everything is connected more quality checks so more laborers so increasing cost 
more packaging cost all of that second resultant savings are greater than cost of improving quality always 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 so see here uh see this here from 18 lakh we have gone down to 11.5 lakh so how much we have saved effectively we have saved approximately 6.5 lakh rupees but to save this 6.5 lakh rupees we had to incur a little amount a lower amount so the resultant savings are always higher the resultant savings are always higher quality costs are those incurred in excess of those that would have been incurred if product was built for exactly the right the first time if you are going to make the product the right the first time then the quality cost eventually will go down to a very very large extent is what it says so these are the views regarding the cost of quality got it Done. now we come to the paf model what is this paf can be asked in the uh, mcqs <coughs> paf basically stands for prevention appraisal and failure we have to optimally incur prevention and appraisal to ensure that the failure is reduced to the minimum bare minimum level possible prevention appraisal failure is the most widely accepted method for measuring and classifying quality cost will be asked in the mcq paf used for measuring and yeah classifying quality cost this is the five step procedure that you have to follow first see it is like failing in the examination if suppose you have failed in the exam then <coughs> how you will determine the next path so you will see you will gather information up to why you have failed so number of failures in the system you will see how many internal failures are there external failures are there right so number of failures number of failures in the system then once we know about that then we will quantify that uh, how much failure is there based on that we will see the four listed elements that the failure is on account of prevention appraisal internal failure external failure so that is uh, finding out charting out the four elements then allocate resources and finally evaluate the performance and finally evaluate the performance so that's how the whole system works in case of path model what is it <coughs> find out the number of failures once you know of the number of failures see seek the data relating to that divide it into the four parts that we have just studied then allocate the resources to ensure that your prevention and appraisal cost increase or prevention and appraisal uh, focus is there and then finally keep on doing this so that your performance will keep on getting better will keep on getting better 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 okay guys done so this is about your application of path model application of path prevention appraisal failure model done done remember it okay no need to magify anything because it's an mcq so things will be manageable and finally, this PATH model, model will lead to something called as the iceberg model, the last concept for the day. And after this, we will do two sums and few MCQs and then we'll be done with the today's session. Chal. So, iceberg model. See, iceberg is like our CA journey. Today, you are burning yourself in solitude. You are single, studying, working hard, sacrificing parties, sacrificing marriages, focusing, feeling sad at times, depression, anxiety, don't know at times what to do, feeling lonely. All of this will be uh, <clears throat> taken care of once you get the name Chartered Accountant, once you get the degree Chartered Accountancy before your name. And this is what Iceberg model is. For the whole world, you know, on 14th of January, I'll give you my example. On 14th of January, okay, only I knew how much hard work I had put to get this degree. On 15th of January, the result comes and the world will say, oh, how lucky. In just uh, so less time, he has become a chartered accountant. But only we know 
the five years, the six years of energy, the sacrifices that we have put in to ensure that, you know, we get our degree to the best manner possible. So, this is what iceberg is. Iceberg at the top will be very less. But beneath the water, there are so many things which are involved. You know, it is like our mother who is working so hard for us. But we will never uh, be able to find out that how hard she is working. So, it's like she is like the iceberg. We just see the tip. But below that, there is a lot of hard work which is involved. And that's what the PATH model is all about. That's what the whole PATH model is all about. Alright, guys. Uh, the iceberg model is all about. The iceberg model is all about. Okay. Now, let's connect it with this. Let's, let's, let's connect it with this. Example, even for the quality, what we see on the top is recalls, customer returns, waste, rejects, testing cost, rework, inspection cost, only these above above things. But there is a lot of other things involved. The overtime that we will have to ask our, custom, the, our employees to do if there is a rework. The excessive employee uh, work or fluctuation. There will be delays in planning because you had planned for making 100 products every day. But out of that, 10 products are defective. So you will have to first recorrect them. So there will be planning delays. Late paperwork. There will be excessive inventory unnecessarily. Development cost of failed product. Complaint handling will be there. Dissatisfied customer putting time there. Incorrect completed sales order. Excessive IT cost, field service expenses, there will be billing pricing errors. So, there will be a lot of issues other than what can be seen at the top of the iceberg. A lot of other things like your CA degree. When you get the degree, people will just see this. Oh, wow, you are a started accountant. Overnight success. No, it is not. It is an effort of five years. A lot of sacrifices. Iceberg model. Got it? Okay, so with this, we complete today's theory session. Only a minority of the cost of poor and good quality are obvious, above, appear above the surface of the water. The reduction of cost under water has a huge scope. If we identify and improve these costs, cost of doing business will significantly, significantly reduce. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is what iceberg model says. So, we have to focus equally on these. Because if these go down, automatically this will also come down. Got it? So, that's, this is about your iceberg model. Now, next session we will start with TQM. But before that, now whatever we have studied in terms of quality, cost and all of that, we have few practical sums that we have to solve. So, let's start with that. Let's start with that. So, modern business environment. Uh, I'll just connect you to the module. See here, modern business environment and then buyer's market. They have just given one side of the story. I have also given you the other side. They have just told that, okay, cost plus approach. I've told you competitive pricing. They've told you determined by the supply. I've told you JIT. So I'll be one step ahead only from the module. Don't worry. Then from seller's market to buyer's market, the globalization, Global access capacities, fierce competition, same language, availability, accessibility of data, timely uh, availability of raw materials, all of that. Cost of quality, Joseph Juran, Philip Crossby, views regarding this high quality means high cost, savings, components of quality, good, bad, prevention, appraisal, prevention cost, its, its examples, appraisal cost, internal failure, external failure, right? Then two questions that now we are going to solve optimal cost of quality its diagram everything is taken care of right everything is taken care of are you understanding guys done so now we are done with the theory part and we will be starting with the 
practical aspects for that you will have to open the practical book yes the practical book is what now you have to open because now that's what we are going to start with okay so uh, have you opened it guys open the chapter Nice. Sure. Live Well Limited is a manufacturing company that produces a wide range of consumer products for home consumption. Among the popular products are, so it's the first question that we are solving. Huh? Uh, among its popular products are its energy efficient and environment friendly LED lamps. Company has a quality control department that monitors the quality of production. As per the recent report, recent cost of poor quality report, the current rejection rate for LED lamps is 5%. 5,000 units of input go through the process each day. Each unit that is rejected results into a loss of 200 to the company. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Listen. See here. The current rejection rate for LED lamps is 5%. So, there are in all 5,000 units. 5% is the rejection which is 250. For every rejection... 200 rupees is the loss. So, into 200. So, 250 into 200 is how much? 250 into 200 is rupees 50,000. So, that is the cost that you are incurring currently. Now, the quality control department has proposed changes to the inspection process that would enable early detection of defects. Oh, this would reduce the overall rejection rate from 5% to 3% of units of input. Yay! So, previously also 5% was there. Now also 3% will be remaining only. But at least 2% reduction will happen. Hello! At least 2% reduction will happen which is good. So, from 5000 into 2% if I do 100 units at least now will not be defective. So, for these 100 units 200 per unit which works out to how much? Correct. Rupees 20,000. Rupees 20,000 worth of money can be saved. 20,000 worth of money can be saved. But to save this, the improved inspection process would cost the company 15,000. To save this, 15,000 will have to be incurred. 5,000 is your net savings. We will say accept the project. Now, this is what the questions will ask you. They will ask you this typical question. You have to solve it quickly like I did on the calculator. Give the MCQ correct answer. Bingo! Get full marks. <laughs> now, if this would have been a typical SCMP 100 mark paper, I would have opened this and solved it thoroughly. Each and every word. But now, thankfully, we just have to find the final answer. So, we can directly come to the solution without caring very much for the uh, presentation part as such, right? Chal. So, what is the current system? Guys, I hope we are clear. Obviously, I solved it with the flow while reading the question, but uh, found it pretty much manageable. No? We will we'll solve. Current system is divided into two parts. That 5000 units are there having 5% defect which is giving 250 units defect into 200 per unit. So, 50,000 rupees is the loss. 50,000 rupees is the loss. Right. Now, as per the new system,
as per the new system what is going to happen see here previously it was 3% uh, now it is th only 3% defect so can i say from 5 it has reduced to 3 so effectively 2% is what you will save 2% is what you will save so 5000 units into 2% 100 units is what you are going to save 100 units yes you heard that right for every unit 200 per unit you are going to save which will result into rupees 20000 savings good which is good 20000 i am saving but but but, but 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 now i will also incur costs uh, relating to approximately 15,000. So, in a nutshell, net saved is how much? Rupees 5,000. 20k minus 15k. 20k minus 15k is the net amount that you are saving. Guys, are we clear? Guys, any doubts you can ask me. Huh? I hope you have my number. Obviously, I had given it you all in the first session any doubts i will be going at a good pace so that we are on time in terms of portion completion at the same time you know understanding is also there depth is also there basics are also covered but you know overall 100 percent 360 degree things are there but if and also tell me you know how are you finding it in terms of understanding the uh, the concepts so many examples i'm giving whether it's valuable to you value for money to you or not to do drop me a whatsapp once you watch down the sessions are you understanding the practical questions or not all of this yeah okay so this was the first part guys first part we had already solved on our own only second part after the implementation analyze the maximum rejection rate beyond which the proposal ceases ceases means stops to be beneficial see now after which the proposal will not be beneficial i'll tell you see this proposal is beneficial this year it was beneficial because we saved more than the cost that we are incurring cost incurred was fifteen thousand. saving was twenty thousand. Five thousand extra we are able to save five thousand extra we are able to save right but if if just think just just logically think at what level will you stop Suppose if you are getting a benefit of 15, uh, say for 16,000 rupees, will you still do it? The answer is yes. Benefit 15, uh, 16, say uh, cost 15, 1,000 at least, 1,000 at least we are making a profit. If it is 15,000 one saving, 15,000 cost, still I am okay, 1 rupees at least I am saving. But if this was saving was 14,000 and cost was 15,000 still will you do it the answer is absolutely no because 1,000 you are losing so at till what time till what benefit will you continue the answer is 15,000 below that if the savings goes you will not consider it right so that's what the whole point is that our cost is very clear 15,000 how much is the benefit that you are looking at? See, you know here that savings per unit is rupees 200 per unit. So, how many units minimum you need to ensure to go ahead with this whole process? So, you will say that savings, how much is the savings? At least it should be 15,000. So, say your cost is 15,000. Your savings should be at least 15,000. 200 per unit is your saving into x number of units is equal to 15,000. So, therefore, x is equal to 75 units. 75 units. Are you understanding, guys? Yes. This is, this is it. This is the minimum number of units that I require to ensure that things are on the right track. If so the number of units saved is 74 units. I will not accept it. So, how much is 75 effectively? So, we will say 75 units out of 5000 units is, is 1.5%. 1.5%. 1 
So in our first case, it was 2%. So we were happy. In our first case, it was 2%. So we were happy. We were like, okay, 2% is very good. Accept it. But, 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 but. But if it goes below 1.5%, we will not. So how much is the savings? So we will say if savings less than 1.5%, then we will not accept then we will not accept we will not accept are we clear suppose suppose the savings is 1.4 percent suppose the savings is 1.4 percent of say 5000 so can i say 70 units into 200 per unit 14000 rupees is the sorry is the saving how much is the cost? Hello? How much is the cost? Sir, 15,000. Reject. So, at least we need that much. And that's what the answer is. You can read the detailed answer if you have time. Obviously, I have to get it done in terms of understanding and in terms of ensuring that if an MCQ comes, you should be able to answer it. So, see here. 75 units each day is what we will say. 1.5% rejection rate improvement. In other words, when the rejection rate is 3.5, 5 minus 1.5, 3.5, till then we will be accepting it below that. We will not accept it at any cost. Understood? Done with this question. Now we move on to the next question, question number 2. Yeah. Chal. So open the question number 2. We will start. JK Limited produces and sells a single product. Presently, the company is having its quality control system in a way that at an annual external failure and internal failure cost of 440 and 850 respectively. Very easy. So, question number 2 is what we are starting with. Okay. So, now what they have said? External failure, internal failure. External failure, 440. Internal failure, 850. So, internal failure, external failure. How much is the internal failure? 850. External failure, 440. Right? Yes. So, total. How much is the total? It is 1290. It is 12,90,000. Then, what they have said, as the company is not able to ensure supply of good quality products up to the expectation of its customers and wants to manage competition, what is it? It is expected to implementation of new system which will lead to a prevention cost and appraisal cost. So far prevention and appraisal cost was not there, but now it is there. So, so now we have a prevention cost. Now we have a appraisal cost. How much is the prevention cost, guys? 5,60,000. How much is the appraisal cost, guys? 70,000. Total how much? Sir, 6,30,000. Okay. And, 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 and. Now, but, but, but what has happened? Obviously, the internal failure and external failure will go down. How much? External and internal failure cost will reduce by rupees 1 lakh. Huh? By 1 lakh, not to 1 lakh. So, from 850, this will go down to internal failure cost will go down to 750. And what about external failure cost? It will go down to 4 lakh 10, will reduce by 4 lakh 10,000. So, from 440, to 4 lakh 10,000 to 4 lakh 10,000 alright so so it has gone down by 4 lakh 10,000 oh wow it's awesome it's awesome so 4.1 lakh so 30,000 in all 7 lakh 80,000 got it so now 
your total cost is 13 14 lakh 10000 okay so financially if you see our cost has increased from 1290 to 14 lakh 10000 but frankly speaking logically if you will see even though the financial cost overall total financial total quality cost has increased that's okay because now at least our cost of good quality is being incurred and cost of bad quality has gone down drastically. So in the short term, you will see the financial and you will feel, oh, oh my God, this is too much. The cost has increased. But, but in the long term, the overall quality will ensure that the sales will increase and eventually the profitability will increase. All right. So I think we should go ahead with the whole process the new quality control and recommend the acceptance from financial perspective the recommendation may be a no but from a non-financial perspective it will be a yes because quality non-financial perspective is a quality and quality is always to be honored what is your advice to the company if the company wants to achieve zero defect through a continuous program so that's the next concept that we will be doing tqm and suggest a suitable quality control level at minimum cost. So see, we will always want to be a zero uh, defect company. Again, it is a part of TQM itself. So the second and third part, once we do TQM tomorrow, then you can go through on your own and you will be able to answer that. So as discussed, two questions from the practical book done. Theory thoroughly done. Now we will come quickly to our MCQ book and try to solve the first 25 MCQs. Sure. And now we'll be able to solve the MCQs in a very, very quick manner because, uh, yeah, because we have done the theory concept so, so thoroughly. So please, please, please open your MCQs. In that, we will start with the SK MCQs because see, I say MCQs are very, uh, you know, separately spread out as in there is a, well, there'll be a question on a uh, strategy, uh, supply chain management, then TQM, then cost of quality and everything will be jumbled up. But here in our SK MCQs, everything is as per the concept. So the first initial concept cost of quality is done. And for that, we have questions till question 27. Yeah. So first 27 questions are now what we are going to solve. Probably it will take around maximum 10 minutes and we'll be done. We'll be done with today's session and we'll be done with three things. The MCQs, the practicals, the theories. And that's how every session we'll try to do all of that. Okay. Sure. Now quickly, let's start with MCQ. So MCQ should not take time if we had done the previous part properly let's start what characterizes today's business environment yes the rapid changes the dynamisms correct definitely definitely is what characterizes the yes the today's business environment so rapid changes and dynamism then what is the main challenge for business managers in modern environment what is the challenge let's see Embracing stagnation, traditional practices, ignoring technological, understanding and adapting to rapid changes. So according to me, it is 2C. See, there will be few questions. Uh, out of 100, say 2-3 questions will may not match with our answer behind. See, the answers are also given here uh, behind. So, few questions may be here and there. So, few questions may be here and eh? Let's see. See, this is the final solution at the end. Every solution is given. So, but again, two, three questions may be a bit here and there. And that everything will match. Okay. So, what has been the main revolution? Yeah. Main revolution in the business environment. Tell me. Question number three. Shift from buyer's market to seller's market? No. Transition from static to dynamic? No. Change evolution from manual to automated? Yes. Yes. Okay. 
चेंज फ्रॉम सर्विस ओरिएंटेड टू प्रोडक्ट ओरिएंटेड नाउ सो आई थिंक सी इवोल्यूशन फ्रॉम मैनुअल टू ऑटोमेटेड प्रोसेस व्हाट इज द करंट ट्रेंड इन बिजनेस एनवायरनमेंट what is the current trend in the business environment tell me sellers market dominance buyers market dominance yes one side what are the characteristic of today's buyers market limited globalization no no excess globalization lack of competition no no excess capacities in production yes what does coq stand for cost of quantity no no cost of quality yes yes who popularized the concept of cost of quality can i say dr joseph juran yes okay then what is the focus of concept of quality in the text conformance to quality quantity no see what what they are asking is this part they are asking this part quality conformance to customer specification satisfy customer expectation value for money this is what they are asking conformance to customer specification definitely we want satisfy customer expectation and give value for money so what is the focus on concept of quality conformance to a specification and customer expectations 8b yeah. then which view suggests that resultant savings are greater than cost of improving quality hmm. savings are greater than whose view i think it was demings view so this we'll come to know in the next session when we do the demings tqf next what are the two broad categories of coq cost uh, price of conformance and price of non conformance almost all the answers we should know you should not even look at the alternatives what is the term used for price of conformance cost of good quality 11b what is the main focus of prevention costs remedying defects measuring monitoring avoiding quality problems yes 13 which cost category is associated with measuring and monitoring activities related to quality measuring and monitoring activities related to quality focus on quality is always on prevention cost what when do internal failure cost occur before the customer receives the product or service what is the focus of external failure cost uh cost incurred up what are external failure cost basically are cost incurred after customer detection of defects what does the term optimal cost of quality suggest uh increased expenditure on prevention and appraisal leads to reduced failure cost yes 16b so according to me it is 16b i think behind the answer is 16a so correct it to 16b okay, next uh, why is an external person recommended to determine the cost of quality to avoid inter ex, internal bias yes to increase project team no so we need an external person so that bias is not there internal bias is not there we can take independent decisions what is the argument regarding striving for zero defects it is helpful yes it is economically helpful definitely it is so uh, 18 a okay how is coq calculated in its simplest form in terms of money effort no as a percentage of cost yes purpose of five step process in paf model see try to remember what they had said paf is the most widely accepted method for measuring and classifying quality costs yes measuring and classifying quality costs okay okay what does the iceberg model illustrate hidden nature of quality costs right yes according to iceberg model where are the majority of costs hidden below the surface of water next what is the potential impact of identifying and improving hidden costs 
increase in business cost no in, no significant reduction in the cost of doing business yes then in the past two decades the business environment in many sectors has been characterized by yes rapid changes obviously main revolution has happened from seller to buyer buyer to seller seller to buyer now the buyer demands what is the challenge for business managers in today's environment the major challenge according to me is yes obviously the understanding the dynamic business environment yes and the last 27 concept of cost of quality includes price of conformance and price of non conformance with this we complete today's session all right guys so yes how was it do tell me do let me know because your feedback We'll ensure that we are on the right track. Hope you enjoyed the session. Time for me to say hasta la vista. Take care. Keep smiling. And tomorrow again we will meet with new theory, with new practical, with new MCQs. Bye.